baseball is dead. Rest in peace. It, uh, <clears throat> it's a Wednesday episode of the podcast. I would say last night was a pretty eventful night of baseball. There's not a ton of stories, but I guess that there's been more, I guess, character development within the league. Some of the games that happened last night, uh, crazy finish to Mariners Royals looked like for a second uh, that, you know, the whole trading your closer when you're in a wild card race thing was really going to come back to haunt the, the Seattle Mariners. Thanks to Ty France, that wasn't the case. But at the end of the day, it kind of kind of still was. You can still you can still win the game and have it be a situation. We were like, why the fuck did we trade our closer? Um, the Baltimore Orioles got absolutely waxed by the San Diego Padres. And you're never going to believe this. <clears throat> but Luis Severino made a start against the best lineup in baseball. And it didn't go great. It mm. truly didn't. It, it left a lot to be desired. Some loud but I noise. said it last night. I said, uh, you know, Braves minus one and a half for a Luis Severino start was the lock of the century. It, he wasn't even really that bad. Like he gave up a three run bomb to Ozuna and a two run bomb to Acuna. <clears throat> but really. The story no, of the night no, was the Yankees getting one hit. Yeah, but that's that. That's not great. When you give up two bombs and five not, runs, that's hey, not a. For, that's not a. Lu- that's on not the Luis that bad. That's in bad. a Luis Severino on the Luis Severino scale. That's not that bad. He's given up nine runs is regularly. That, is that, hold on, is Yankees fans? When you hear that, how does that make you feel inside? Ah. <laughs> uh... I'm not, that's a serious question. I'm not looking to, I'm not looking to poke fun here. I'm not looking to irritate anybody. I'm just saying if that's where we're at, where we're looking at Luis Severino's out, he's going, look, two tanks, five runs. Not that bad, right? (laughs) We still got a chance. (laughs) (laughs) Two two tanks, five runs. We're in this. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Still a lot of meat on that. This past five. (laughs) By it far. is looking at it right now. That's what I'm saying. For him, it's not that bad. I just, you know, I mean, for Pete's sake, it's <laughs> it's it's not that bad. Uh, I expected way worse when he's gone out there and given up nine plus runs and starts, and you're going up against the Braves. You're thinking like it's not the uh, what do they call it? The immovable force and the the, ir- the immov- irresistible the force meets the irrebel- immovable irresistible force and the immovable object. It was not that. It was just kind of like a very movable object against an irresistible force. Yeah, the baseball <laughs> kept moving over the wall. That's a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, uh, you can't have that. I literally <laughs> tweeted last night before the start, the unstoppable force versus the most movable object ever. Because <laughs> there you go, because everybody has already noted that the Braves rank first in baseball in like everything first inning related. But Severino has also has and still is the worst pitcher in baseball in terms of first inning ERA. So it really was the clash of the Titans, so to speak, on that <laughs> front. And I, I tweeted that and I was like, a lot of the responses were wait for a scoreless outing because baseball. And I was like, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate because baseball. No, no, exactly no, what no. we <laughs> thought would happen was what happened. I blinked <laughs> and there was a three run homer. I just I, I love that we're characterizing multiple fucking multi home runs allowed in like Right, and like three innings of work is like you know he just he got out of there without much damage you know yeah because, yeah, yeah, because yeah. Jared, if we if you go back and you look at some of the numbers here like uh, let's just go back and think about the last oh I don't know seven starts for Luis Severino yeah. you want to take a shot number. at how many home runs he's given up in those last seven starts let me answer that for uh, you. it's been twelve he's six he's given up twelve so just double that guess 12? six he's given up twelve he is ERA. Slightly north of eleven. I don't know what that does for you. I don't know if that's like a tipping point. Like, look, I had him decent at hey, 10, twelve five. homers in a sub twelve ERA. That's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad. The FIP at seven point nine seven. So, uh, not great. Opponents hitting almost four hundred during this seven start stretch for Severino. Who yeah, over you said yeah. almost? That means they're not. Yeah. Basically, every batter that is coming to the plate over the stretch that Dallas just talked about is hitting like prime era Ted Williams. Against Luis, <laughs> every single guy is basically prime Ted Williams. Well, look, think, think about it this way too. He has made fifteen starts. He's made fifteen starts. There's only been three outings where he hasn't 
given up a home run. Four outings okay. in which he's given up two home runs or more. And so then not every single one. Three outings. No, two outings where he's given up three homers. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, we're talking about one of the great missed opportunities of all time, too. Like, I never want to, like, mock a guy for, like, his money or whatever, but he's a free agent at the end of this season and threw, had a 3.18 ERA in 19 starts last year. If he had come out and put that same quality up over 25 starts, people would have been lining up to pay Luis Severino this offseason, given how live his arm is. And he has a 7.98 ERA in 67 and two-thirds innings. Like... So this you, makes me wonder: I, is just this don't a, get walk years that are this bad? Well, and is he a salvageable? Like, is he somebody that's salvageable? Like, is this a yeah? Is this He'll a go guy? To Tampa. Well, He'll that's what I'm saying. Is this a guy where the, where the million when the Cy Young? Yeah, where the Rays or the Dodgers are just looking at him, going, "Can't wait for them to give up on this dude." <laughs> yeah, can't exactly. wait. Exactly, and that's definitely going to happen. Whether or not he lives up to it, I, I don't know, uh, because it's not like. I think in certain cases you see a guy like Corey Kluber, for example, it's like, you know, that's a dude that's just, he's out of gas. He's broken down on the side of the road and there, there's no more spare parts to fix that guy Uh, with Severino, like the injury stuff. Like, yeah, like he's had his fair share of injuries over the years, but he's still young enough to where like, those are not um, like he's broken down and there's no way we, we can fix this guy for all intents and purposes. He's, he's healthy this year. He just sucks. He's, like, I, I don't know if it's injury related or mechanics or whatever, but there's no way you can go from being as good as he was in 2018 and 2019 to whatever this is right now without, I don't know. We well, go Houston, back another year. Tampa, he, well, he Dodgers, was, wasn't he? The team's going to be able to fix this guy. He was an all-star in 17 and 18. And I mean, uh, what I think, yeah. what I think about is, all right. So what happened in 19 injury, right? Shut down. You missed twenty, like lat, whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah. you missed twenty with with COVID and all that and all that shit that you got to deal with. Then you come back in twenty one and you're dealing with COVID protocol and preparation and blah. So after he gets hurt in twenty nineteen and then he has to deal with the COVID situation in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one. I mean, could there be an instance where it was just a struggle for him to to get back to who he was? Because in twenty twenty two, things were not that bad. Things were not that bad for yeah. Severino. I mean, no. I, I, you also I, hate to. Re- well, to go to the health point, though, like that's what's so confusing here is that if it was a health related thing, you feel like you would see some diminishment in velocity, right? Either relative to seasons past or within the course of this season, right? And his fastball velocity is the exact same as it's been uh, in recent seasons. What's fucking crazy, though, is that something. And this is where I'd love to like see somebody get into the lab with Severino because his fastball velocity is intact, but nothing else about the fastball results are intact. Like he's, and I'm not talking about a difference of like 20 or 30 points. We're talking about a guy who allowed a 186 batting average and a 377 slugging off of his four seamer last year. And those numbers are 363 and 712 this year. It's double what it was last year. And he's gone from a 30 plus percent whiff rate with that pitch two seasons ago to an 18.5 percent whiff rate now. So I don't know whether it's where it's being placed, but I do know he's not getting these swings and misses on a fastball that's still being thrown exactly as hard as it used to be um, like he used to. And people are absolutely fucking tattooing this pitch. That to me is just like what is going on there? Because most of his other pitches are intact quality wise swing and miss stuff like it's just. A lot of it seems to be that pitch, and it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, that uh, that John Boy Aaron Boone interview where he announces that he's making his next start is going to hit like crack. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, we have every intention of Luis Severino making his next start. Yep. Yeah, you do. Well, that <clears throat> I feel like that's the saddest part because, I, I mean, how many teams in the league would he still be pitching on? The fact that he's still pitching for the Yankees? says a lot about the Yankees and where they at, where they're at and how many options they have. Well, I'll tell you right now. But then again, maybe they just feel like that. Oh, he's still he's still throwing hard as shit. It's, you know, maybe it gets better. The, yeah, there's, at the end of the day, there's a there's a lot of season left. The reality <laughs> is, you know, whatever's ahead of us, like there's a lot of season left. Mm-hmm. You know, there's you know, we talk about being towards the end or, or there's a quarter of the season left and yeah, we got to do better than this. Got to do better. I feel it, so there is just him. something going on because his slider is the same way. 
it's the same velocity and it's basically yes. allowing hits at twice the rate that it did last year. Um, it can't be as simple as he's tipping because I think people would have at least. Yeah, somebody would have floated that. There's right? a large enough sample to be able to have seen something. Don't know. Yeah. One of uh, one of nature's great mysteries, the fall off of Luis Severino, who will still continue to get opportunities in this Yankees rotation. Uh, Joe, what, what did you see last night from Luis Severino? Were you impressed that he, only, that he got out of there only giving up two bombs and five earn? I kind of was. I mean, I'm having the same reaction Jay Hayes <laughs> saying. I'm like, this guy's actually throwing hard as shit. Like, I, you know, how has he been so bad? He had some strikeouts. He had at least one good anywhere. He struck out. I think he struck out the side. And I said, oh, shit. Luis Severino is back. Well, here could be something <laughs> that uh, th- that he's running into. Chase contact. So as far as O contact goes. Um, about as high as it's ever been for Severino this year, 68% chase rate, 68% O swing rate, basically. So when they're going out of the zone, whether it be on an elevated fastball, whether it be on a slider away, when they're going out of the zone, they're putting that pitch in play more than they ever have. They're making more contact in the strike zone against Luis Severino more so than they ever have. He's getting more swings on him in the strike zone, more so than he ever has. And the whiff rate is as low as it has ever been. And as far as the meatball swing percentage goes, meatball swing, just fucking dick shots. You guessed it. Outside of... The anomaly of 100 in 2021, 83%, about as high as it's ever been outside of the 85 wow. briefly in 2016. Wow. What team do you think he ends up with? Like, what team do you think sees? Because, I mean, to Joe's point, he's still throwing hard. What team sees that? I mean, it's got to be, it's like everyone thinks, like, oh man, you suck. So you're going to end up with the Pirates or the A's or one of those no, shitty I mean, teams. It could but be. You, I vote uh, Durham. <laughs> I, I I legitimately think that um, I think you can be, I think you can almost kind of look at it as breadcrumbs when you're trying to follow the trail of organizations who fancy themselves uh, as a team that can take analytics and convey them and translate them and apply them and actually get results. If you're a team who feels like you can do that, then maybe you're a team who's willing to take a flyer on Luis Severino. Like if you're the Astros, if you're the Rays, if you're the Dodgers who can look at a Severino acquisition and go, that's not going to hurt us much financially. And we're in a pretty good spot as far as our data and our brain trust when it comes to the lab to see if we can unlock something here. Well, you're signing him... Like not to depend on him, right? But You're signing him to work guy, with him, to mold him. Yeah. Yes. Also, like I, I think he's going to get a pretty substantial amount of money too, unless he proves to be not healthy. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, Noah Syndergaard entering this year got a eleven million dollar deal. Yeah, right? one year, eleven mil. And and I'll tell you with what, maybe diminished his ERA, velocity. Yeah, maybe his ERA wasn't as high as Severino's is going to end the year, but I don't think anybody's going to debate where their relative stuff is at, right? No. So like. If he gets eleven million dollars, I listen. We're way ahead of ourselves on this now, but like to me, Severino is going still has that that one year pay single year payday ahead of him before he's. And then if it doesn't well, work, and, well, next that's why. Year, then we're talking about like camp invites and stuff like that. I think, but right. Well, that that's why I said we got to see like using using the. Uh, I don't know if you were if you were listening when I talked about the breadcrumbs. And organizations. Dude, I listen to everything that you say. <laughs> Shut everything. Your mouth. Uh, that that, that's that's what how am I we here tell. For? That's how we tell. <laughs> that's how we tell. Yeah, I'll fucking keep an eye out for your breadcrumbs, man. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> what if he ends up in the fucking uh, Guardians organization because they know what they're oh, doing? Might be bro. the best thing for him. Unfortunately, they give out very few. They, very precious with their $15 million deals. You know what I mean? Well, their $12 million what team deals. Is, what team is Noah Syndergaard on right now? 
That's true. I, mm. I think they might be paying him the veterans minimum. Uh, <laughs> Does anyone even know that Noah Syndergaard's on the Guardians? Like, did anyone know that listening? <laughs> I think he's been doing pretty good, right? Jay, you know. I mean, shit. <laughs> he's been this is where people are going, been, wait. He has been marginally better than I anticipated. There you yes. go. Comeback yeah. player of the year. You yeah, might what if to I told an apology? What if I told the 2015 version of Justin Havens that Noah Syndergaard would would one day become a Cleveland Guardian? First of all, you'd be like, "Who the fuck are the Guardians?" And then second of all, you'd be like, <laughs> "After I explain that, um, what would your what would your take be?" Uh, what went wrong? I think I don't think I was cynical enough in 2015 to have immediately gone to, "Oh, he'll just be some trash rehab project." I probably <laughs> would have gotten excited. I would have been a dummy and gotten excited about it uh, in 2015. Yeah. You had every reason to be excited about it. Great. I was I was a young man back then. Life was completely ahead of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eight years later. Wow. Wow. Uh, we've all peaked. Still no World Series title for the Guardians, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. Or the Mets for that record. Um Dallas, a bantamweight battle for the belt is going down. UFC 292. Uh, Al Jermaine Sterling and Sean Sugar Sean O'Malley will fight for the title this Saturday. Will the current champ keep his crown or is it the challenger's time to shine? Get your bets in on DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC. New customers can bet just $5 to get $150 in bonus bets. Instantly, you having a little. Uh, are you able to watch that, Dallas, on Saturday? Um, I will be able to watch that. I'm always able to watch that. Okay. Are you in a state where you can bet responsibly on the fight? Uh, mm -mm. <clears throat> no, I'll be back home in California. Ah, okay. So I'm just asking in terms of geographical uh, eligibility. Yeah, where where the Oakland A's are. If you if you were in a state. That you could throw down some scratch. Uh, where where where's that money headed? Well, like I, like I told you, man, I, I feel like I'm still I'm still leaning Sugar Sean right now. It's it's still. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got a few days. I got a few days to be swayed, but I st I still feel like uh, you know. Look, I, I'm 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 a fan of the dog, fan of being the dog. So I, I think I think I'm probably rolling with Sugar Sean's camp. I mean, I just I like I vibe with the guy. I like his style, I like his steez. But Al Jermaine is yeah. no fucking joke, man. Yeah. Yeah, those are two uh those are two uh what's the word? They're cut up. Those are two yeah, two dogs ripped. that are in yeah, great shape. They've got abs on top of abs. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the promo code Jared J A R E D. New customers can bet just five dollars on UFC two ninety two to get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets instantly. That's this Saturday only on the DraftKings Sportsbook with the promo code Jared. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler in Massachusetts. Call eight hundred three two seven fifty fifty or visit Gambling Help Line MA dot org in New York. Call eight seven seven eight Hope N Y or text Hope N Y. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after insurance. Opt-in and 10 plus leg requirement for 100% boost. Eligibility, wagering, and deposit restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash baseball terms. The unfortunate news since we last recorded, Shane McClanahan. Boo. That's a wrap for the rest of the year. That's a wrap on next year, TJ. That sucks because I, I'm a big Shane McClanahan fan. Um, but again, like we... we just having this Luis Severino conversation. It's like the Rays will probably just sign Severino one year, 9 million, bring him in. He'll win a signing award or at least finish top three. We'll forget and all about it, McClanahan yeah. and Springs. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the next year it's like, uh, 2025. They'll just be like, Oh yeah. Remember we also have Shane McClanahan. Boom. Now we have this six man rotation where five dudes are, uh, Cy Young candidates basically. But, uh, it's a big blow for now, especially when Tampa, like, 
Joey had the stat the other day about how they've lost all these guys, but they're still first in the league in ERA and all that. Uh, that's impressive for now, but as time goes on, they're not going to be able to maintain their top spot. And then you get into the postseason where power plays in terms of pitching. And I just don't know if they have what it takes. I mean, they've never had what it's taken to win a World Series, but they've at least gotten there a couple times over the years. Uh, how much do you think losing a guy like Shane McClanahan drastically impacts the Rays uh, chances of winning a World Series? Because we all know they're they're going to get to the playoffs. They've, they've been under 500 for over two months now. They've been a below 500 team, which is crazy to think for the way that their season started. But we're talking strictly like all hands on deck. We roll with what we got. Uh, how much does this impact their World Series chances? Greatly. Greatly. Because as you sit right now and you go over this rotation, this the, this the options that you have in this rotation right now, and let's do the Rays a favor and put them in the first round of the seven-game series. What does that starting rotation look like right now? It's what? Eflin? Glasnow? No, Glasnow won. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying as far as like your first three pitchers, wherever you want to slot them, one, two, three, whatever. But it's not even like that you, it's not even like, who do we go with for our top three? They might only have three. <laughs> well, that, that's what I'm getting at is yeah. whatever order, Savale, whatever order you, you want to put them in. Yeah, it's Glasnow, Savale, and Eflin. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like not having um, well, let's Taj help. Bradley. Like him having to be demoted, that that hurts this team more than I think we're probably gonna hear about. They, and there's just, I, I don't want to say that there's no other options, but when you look around, there aren't many other options. And what the Rays are going to have to do now is become the brain trust that everybody thinks of them as, and figure out a way to take that bullpen and all of those different looks and manage that bullpen. This is an opportunity to put this group on full display and flex your muscle in regard to being able to match up, identify which guys can get you through what parts of the game. You know, th this is what the Rays, in my mind, and I always use the comparison of Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and, you know, the way that those guys prepare for regular season games is what has separated them. And unfortunately, when you get into the postseason and you get into the playoffs in the NFL, everybody starts to prepare at that level because the games mean what it means. So maybe sometimes the gap closes. Tom Brady said, fuck you, the gap doesn't close. I'm the greatest ever. You're going to have to do a lot of homework. Um, well, that is where I would have to find the raise in, in that boat. You're going to have to do a lot of homework right now to figure out how to deploy your group over a potential seven-game series if you want to win. I feel like I'm lining up to make the same mistake that I've made with the Rays many times before, which is that the loss of an individual high end starting pitcher is what is going to derail this team. Because while it hasn't always been Tommy John, like we've basically been down this road a lot before. David Price, Price leaves, yep. it's not going to be the same. James Shields leaves, it's not going to be the same. Chris Archer's traded, it's not going to be the same. Blake Snell's traded. Wow, this is the one that's finally going to bite them in the ass. And it really hasn't unless we're talking about actually capturing a World Series, in which case I do think sometimes those moves have cost the raise. Like if if they operated at a different financial level, I do think retaining some of the guys uh, they've lost would have probably produced higher end teams. But to me, this like. I do think it meaningfully reduces their championship equity. I think that has been they've been reducing it themselves across the course of this year, both due to the injuries that we've previously outlined and kind of the flatlining of their play. Uh, worse teams than the current version of the Rays have won the World Series. Um, but I just it, it's it's just it's just disappointing because I feel like. It's just the same story over and over again, where the Rays are an exceptionally built roster that has like 
in terms of winning a World Series, has less margin for error than it ever than a, t- a roster that talented ever should, because the team doesn't supplement with any sort of spending. So like, a- and the difference between this loss and some of the previous ones that I mentioned is that this one is happening in the middle of a season, and there is no way to directly replace what McClanahan was giving them in 2023. There just isn't. How about this? Which rotation would you rather go into a postseason series with? <clears throat> a rotation of Shane Baz, Shane McClanahan, Drew Rasmussen, and Jeffrey Springs, or a rotation with Zach Eflin, Tyler Glasnow, Zach Littell, and Aaron Savale? Because that's what's on the bench right now. That's what's on the shelf is Baz, McClanahan, Rasmussen, Springs, and what they're going to be trotting out there is Eflin, Glasnow, Littell, and Savale. Hmm. Yeah, their IL is stacked. No ifs, ands, or buts. And also, I mean, their bullpen hasn't been as good as it has been, you know, in years past, at least just based on ERA. And if that's what they're going to have to rely on. Well, there's no question that that's what they're going to have to rely on. They are absolutely going to have to rely on that. And what is unfortunate about that situation is because the starting rotation is what it is right now, those bullpen guys that are going to be the leverage guys, the plus side guys, those guys are probably going to be getting work, consistent work, down the stretch because there's not going to be anybody in this rotation who you can lean on to give you that six, seven outing performance to alleviate some of the stress down the stretch. So these guys are going, I don't want to say they're going to be taxed, they're going to be gassed, but they're going to be going into a postseason where they haven't had the luxury or the benefit of catching a breather here and there down the stretch because the rotation's banged up. Uh, and, hey, and not to mention, I'd be the bearer of bad news, but Mr. Wander Franco probably ain't playing the playoffs either. And that's the <laughs> one guy they paid. So, well, yeah. And, and, and to, to that point, not to go down the Wander hole specifically, but like we're, we're talking about the loss of McClanahan to the pitching staff, which makes a lot of sense because he's a pitcher. And we're talking about how the bullpen might not be as good as it has been in previous iterations of the Rays. The real problem here, it's compounding, obviously, but this offense just has been one of the worst offenses in the league for a substantial period of time at this point. Like I I picked a pretty arbitrary cutoff date of July 1st, but since July 1st, they're the tied for the 23rd ranked offense and runs runs per game uh, over that stretch. That's a a month and a half uh, of being an offense that's on par with teams that are basically not competing in the 2023 season anymore. Yeah, the um, same offense that won 14 straight fucking games. Right. It's a complete it feels like a completely different animal than what we were talking about at the beginning of the season, where the conversation was closer to have the Rays figured out slash broken baseball in a way with how the offense was performing and the home runs that they were hitting to whatever this team is. And it doesn't feel like the offense has The offense hasn't suffered the attrition that the pitching staff has, so it's a little bit more confusing why it's been so low in quality for a substantial period of time now. uh, To me, when you couple the fact with – when you couple the idea that this offense might really not be that good anymore, um, or at least is average-ish at best, and the diminishment of the rotation, which we've outlined, and the fact that it's a good, not great bullpen – I don't understand really what the championship equity is on this team. Like they will have some by virtue of making the postseason, but to me, th- this is like a like just to throw out a team. This is like a Brewers championship equity situation now. Like this is not this is not Braves, Astros, Rangers, Dodgers stuff. This is this team is on a completely this is on a lower tier at this point, despite the record. I don't know if you know the answer to this, Jay. Hey, but when so like an injury like this happens and because before we didn't know like is McClanahan coming back this year or not uh, to the playoff odds. Like I know that they would shift on like a sports book, but I'm talking like fan graphs. Like is that number factored in with the fact that McClanahan is not coming back? Like how do they calculate that? So it should be because the way yeah. that my understanding of the odds are calculated is that they come from the the depth charts that Fangraphs uses and the allotment mm-hmm. of playing time that's used on there. So what I don't know is how often those things are updated. I would have mm-hmm. to imagine that 
they are updated. Like I know things were updated following the the trade deadline, for example, because they put out here are the new updated odds, largest changes, which I think we even talked about on this pod. Um, But it should be like you are now getting zero innings for Shane McClanahan as opposed to, you know, 30 or whatever that he was projected for over the remainder of the season. And that I, I think, I think the way that the number of wins that would actually change for the Rays right now or its championship equity would probably be smaller than people would think. But we're also talking about something where the, the Rays championship odds are, are something like, I, I don't know, six or seven percent. I want to like say eight and change. Yeah, eight and change. So if they dropped from 10.0 percent to the 8.8 percent that I see now, that's a meaningful drop. Like even is like. Even like 9.5 to 8.8 with the loss of one player would be a meaningful drop, even if it doesn't seem like that. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big loss for Tampa. Um, not that, and like the crazy thing is, like obviously Rays fans are going to feel horrible about this, but from the, from the neutral MLB fan perspective, I don't think any of us were saying like, man, this is, this is going to be the Rays year. Like no one felt that way. Um, even before the McClanahan news, because they played like dog shit for two and a half months. You have the Wander Franco story where who knows if he's going to play baseball again, <laughs> never mind just this year. Uh, and now you have Shane McClanahan going down, um, not just for the rest of this year, but also for all of next year. So, yeah, that is uh, that's a tough blow. It's not a death blow. But it is well. Uh, I mean, the storyline really started to take a hit when you had Springs go down, and you know what I mean. And then Rasmussen follow, and so you're just looking at it, going, "Well, well shit." Now at the, at this point, we don't have, we don't have really uh, as horses. as I well as I laid out, we have we have the rotation that we would rather take to the postseason. All of those guys are on the shelf, and we now have a rotation of survivors. These are the guys who just haven't gotten hurt. Or well, been- Glasnow, I would put in that tier of the, of those guys, yeah, but yeah. yeah, like the rest of them, yeah, but like you know the Savales and the uh, Eflins of the world is like, yeah, like we can still win with that, but that was not how we drew it up at all. <laughs> no, th- those are not the first three guys taking the baseball. That's going to be no. Springs. It's going to be McClanahan. That just it, it looked very different. Yeah, yeah, man. That is that sucks. That sucks. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you uh, they use their brains like you can't say, man, we flushed X amount of dollars down. Like the Yankees are in a situation where it's like, man, like we really flushed some money down the drain this year for a last place team. The Mets can say that Uh, the Angels, by the way, uh, the new after another loss, not just a loss. They got their dicks blown off by the Texas Rangers last night. And the new updated record since they bought at the trade deadline, they've lost 13 out of 20. And the only teams with a worse record than the Angels since they bought at that trade deadline, the Rockies, the Yankees, the A's, and the D-backs. Yo, the Angels have the exact, roughly the exact same playoff equity. As the Cardinals, the Tigers, wow, the Mets, the Pirates, uh, like we're talking about teams that we've had buried pirate? for for months. The Tigers <laughs> were buried before the season started, oh, no. and the Angels have ended up in the exact same place as the Tigers functionally. In fact, it's worse: zero point five percent for the Tigers, zero point four percent for the angels that's play that's postseason that's not championship their championship odds are down that's to 0.0 percent the mets have a better chance to make the playoffs than the angels right now the cardinals have a better chance to make the playoffs than the angels right some now. people that listed is- the cardinals as the single biggest disappointment of the season on this podcast like a week or two ago <laughs> and the angels are behind them in, pl- in postseason equity right now Oh no! Yeah, I mean, we 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 were like they, trying to be, we were being a little funny at the trade deadline, or I was when I said like how much of a disaster this was. This could not have gone worse faster. It is that simple. <laughs> it's as bad as it could be. Period. Other than like, remember when we were no, talking this is about nightmare well, Remember scenario. when we were talking about how exciting it was going to be when Mike Trout got back and joined the team? 
And they were like, oh, shit, we just added Mike Trout in addition to Giolito and Otani's carrying us. I haven't even heard anything about Mike Trout coming back. And we are well out of the we're, we're eliminated. It's elimination time. Depressing. They had good juju. Jay. Hey, remember? They had the That's juju. That's what they thought. That's what happens when you count on juju, buddy. They mailed the trade. Show had the best game of all time. Angels fans were feeling good. Max was on the pod like and once a week, fingers. dude. We are calling Max once a week. This is the year, man. We're going to push. <laughs> I, I mean, there was such Max a collective again, thinking where like everyone was thinking like kind of like, all right, they're trading – For these guys, this is probably kind of stupid. But it's like, everybody that, just like, wanting. We just want the angels to be. We, so we just bad. want to know we what's going to happen like, with your brain. Just that's all. That that's out. all like, it is. That's God. all it's about is what's going to happen. Like, oh, is this going to this would be cool. Postseason run. That'd be great. Cool. Oh, man, they're not going to make it. What's going to happen with show? He's going to get traded. Uh, we'll see. I'm still curious to see what happens with Shohei and how many starts he makes. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> I'm at my job. Oh, he's he's also, he just got the Rendon surgery. Morning. <laughs> hey, what's up, pal? What's going on, bro? Did you just wake up? Yeah, I'm off the, I'm off the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, heard you guys, I heard you guys, you guys are saying, I, you know, in solidarity with my team. Yeah. I broke my handmade bone for trout, you know, just in case. And then I did the leg for Rendon. Uh, and I've been cramping for Shohei. So I'm, I'm going through it all right now. <laughs> I'm cramping. Lost my voice for now. <laughs> well, keep, you know? your, keep your leg elevated. Drink some, drink some Pedialyte with your left hand or your right hand. Excuse me. You'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Right hand is busy. Right. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> is there a is there an update on Mike Trout? Like, is he going to play for the Angels again this year? I don't. I, I mean, I I want to say I don't think I've ever seen a franchise and a team fall so flat on their face that they've killed the career of a young up and coming. Uh, what would you call me, a Twitter person? Mm-hmm. Like it happens like every year with well, I gain a little bit of traction and then they just play so bad. And everyone's like, yeah, that guy's not that funny when they suck. Yeah, dude, preach. You're talking to a, a Red Sox podcaster that's been podcasting for like, <laughs> I don't know, nine years and five of them are last play seasons with so, one World Series title thrown in. Yeah, you persevere, though. I don't I don't have that dog in me. Yeah, that's true. They need to be, they need to be in the headlines for people to be like, that's funny. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if you bring them back. Like, we're almost, it's almost September, brother. Like, just get that Eagles ticket. <laughs> get those Eagles tickets. <laughs> like, uh, I, I hate to say, I hate to say that, but I mean, would you come back? Like, no. I mean, I would probably come back just just from you know shits and gigs. But uh, at this point, <laughs> uh, we were looking at the Angels playoff chances. Just the, just their percentage, to, yeah. not to win the World uh, Series, but to make the playoffs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. J J <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> it is zero point four percent to make the playoffs. The Detroit <laughs> Tigers, the okay. Detroit Tigers, at zero point five percent have better chances to make the playoffs. What do you have to say about that, Max? Yeah, that's just numbers, brother. That's that's like leave that. <laughs> that's like that's what I don't like about baseball. You give them a calculator, and all of a sudden, nerds can enjoy this too. Like, remember, we used to put them in lockers. Like, that's not like. <laughs> We used to put these guys in lockers, and now they're bringing advocates to the game, and you know all this nerd shit. <laughs> yeah, we're in the hardest division in baseball, kind of. Aside what? from what? <laughs> like, <laughs> the AOS is the toughest division in baseball. There's no way, like, you try playing the Astros every two days, bro. Yeah, it's like, not like that insane. anymore. It's not like that anymore. Actually, I'm about to do that. We we play the Astros. Yeah, uh, good luck. After this coming weekend, we play them like seven times in ten days or something like that. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's that's insane. Then you're gonna have Tuve do a nice thing, and then the media is gonna flip on him, be like, "I don't know how anyone could be mean to this guy." Mm. And like, 
he gave a kid his jersey. Like, he was the same size as a kid. Like, that's <laughs> not even, like, that's the coolest shit ever. Like, and, and yeah, it is hard to be mad at him after that. But, like, you play Astros all the time. You play the Texas Rangers all the time. Who, like, everyone laughs at them for signing uh, Sammy and Seeger. And, like, now they're fucking good. Yeah. And then, uh, what's the, 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 dude, the Mariners, like, I don't know. We got, I'm like, I'm glad they're not going to make it, but like, I don't know. That, like, this is the I toughest. Thought, I thought you were play. about to say, I'm glad the Mariners are playing better now, but you're just a full blown hater. You just like, you, the Mariners might, they could make it. No, they're going to make like, it. Let's get real. They, they're, they choking, could. Dude. they're good. They're good. They're choking to the Royals every chance they get. They like, won last night. They they end up coming back yeah, and winning. Barely. They still won. Oh, but let the oh, but let the Angels do that, and everyone's like, "Oh, well, this team's unserious." Well, I mean, they are an unserious franchise. Let me ask you this question from a oh Angels fan perspective. Uh, okay, so you guys go and trade for Lucas Giolito, and Yikes. Angels fans and Ronaldo Lopez. Shout out to Ronaldo Lopez. So you guys are like, we bought, we're going for it, we're all in, now we go, let's go Halos, yada, yada, rally monkey, the whole nine yards. Uh, are you now, two, call it two weeks later, three weeks later, are you at the point where when you watch Shohei, that you have to put yourself in the mental headspace of like, this is it, like I'm watching the last few weeks of Shohei Otani as an angel. Like, are you there yet? Because you should be. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> I mean, it's not even like, it's, it's the, like, I, I don't want to say, like, yeah, like, it, it sucks. Like, he's gone. Like, he's gone. Oh, yeah. Gone. Oh. Like, Nevin was chewing out the dugout. Like, no, like, I think, like, Molly Get your like, fucking heads in the, the game. Like, Get your fucking heads in the game. Yeah, Renfro was fucking doing curls and, like, nobody, everyone was just doing their own thing. Yeah, dude, it, that sucks. And I hate that they're all rentals. That, like, well, who out of playing the what keep prone? Like, oh, great, thanks. But like, I would I would like to keep prone, but I mean, what's gonna Lucas Giolito's put himself in issues? He's probably like, ah, oh, this place sucks, and he's coming from fucking Chicago. Yeah, he's also he's, he's from out there though, so you at least have that going for you, where it's like, ah, eh, this sucks, but at least yeah. like, my family can come watch me pitch. And no one's getting slapped in the hot tub over here, but like, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it just is what it is. Like, it, I can't imagine Reynaldo Lopez, who, like, his grandfather just passed away, you know, and he took a break. He came to the team, he took a break from the team, and now he's back. And that, what the fuck? We were, like, three games out when I left, and I come back, and everything's on fire. <laughs> and, like, I don't know. Yeah, it, it just it just kind of sucks. And it, the way that it happened is so, like, eerily last year, where we just had a 14 game skit early. Boom, Madden, Madden's gone, Mohawk, fucking. <laughs> I asked him if he had the over when he walked in Seager. I'd never like get back on the field, no big deal. And then uh fucking it happens this year, but just delayed back a month. So like every year we gain a month. So like fourteen game was in May, this time was in like August, you know, next time it's gonna be in September. Like eventually no, we're just no. gonna enter away to the World Series just year by year. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. You know? It'll be over by April. It'll, work, huh, It'll be over by April next year. Don't you worry, buddy. Yeah, this yeah. is just one oh, big. Don't, this don't is do that. one big animal rescue commercial right now in the arms <laughs> of the <laughs> angels. <laughs> Jay, and then I like I like Jay Hayes. Uh, Jay Hayes like he's like oh call him after the off. Yeah, when the Dodgers get eliminated, and then <laughs> the number one Dodger fan on the pod could be like oh well they faced the mighty uh, Reds and they fell off and like. It, so I'll be waiting for that one. Yeah, that, I, they're going to have a great season. It's going to be for nothing. Yeah. Quick point yeah. of clarification. Well, definitely, that's, how that's, how yeah. that's how it goes. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Dodgers yeah. playing that's, good ball right now, though. Dodgers playing good yeah. ball right now. I don't know if you that's, if that's, in on that. Yeah, but like they do it. They've been doing that for the last 10 years. And the cycle of my fandom, the Angels still very good. Deadline, we never buy. This year we bought. That was cool. And then was it I guess I didn't know what was coming, but then it's like collapse. And then now it's like, all right, let's watch. Howie Kendrick break everyone's heart in the fucking NLDS. Mm. Uh, and I just, that was, dude, someone else made a Rendon video. Did you see that? What'd you say? Someone else made a Rendon like fucking 20 minute doc. I felt like a cheater watching it, but it was like, I was like, fuck, I have to watch this. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see that. I did, does Anthony Rendon. Down. Didn't you have like press passes like to go on the field? Does Anthony Rendon know how hard you ride for him? 
No, nah, he doesn't. Well, I mean, they said that people show him stuff online, but I can't imagine they're showing him right now because it's not fucking good. But no, I, I don't think anyone in that franchise knows how hard I ride for them just to get shoved in the back of the stadium. Uh, <laughs> well, fucking every other reporter ever. If you even create a website that's like a fake sports website, they're like, yeah, come on up. Come hang out here. Sports cards, this, whatever. And they just put them right up front. And then they're like, oh, you, uh, Joe Madden about the over one tier. Go sit in the fucking corn dog section. <laughs> corn dog. <laughs> Jared, I used to be like you at Fenway, except like Angel Stadium wasn't that cool. Out. And, then, mm. and then they just were like, yeah, no, nah, let's not do this. Damn. That's tough. Yeah. That's, That's good. Tough. That once show A leaves, once show A leaves, they'll bring you right back down there. <laughs> yeah. It's just going to be you. No, 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 just you. There's like a million Japanese reporters. Like, not and you know, granted, he can't. He needs the access, but I think once he leaves, there's going to be some room for my car to you know get parked in the stadium. You're going to get to yeah. run on the fucking field, buddy. Yeah, you're going to yeah. get to you, play you, shortstop. Yeah, I was going to say you might hit third, Max. I'm, I'm, you might hit third. I'm bringing, I'm bringing my glove. I'm bringing my glove. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you don't really I'm need really to. We've seen that, Max. So. I, yeah, we, we have wow. seen that. Yeah. I know. Uh, you guys need to run that back. But let's let's run that back, please. <laughs> we will. Um, all right, Max. You oh, oh, uh, wait, hold just, on, hold just on. Yeah, I, we got to clean up one point of clarification. Uh, Max okay. and I are friends on Instagram okay. now, and I just wanted to clarify that uh, you never put me yeah. in any in any sort of locker. I just I just oh. needed to no, we needed to no, circle no, back. No, no, oh, okay. Because no. you were shouting out nerds. No, I just no, wanted no, the numbers. No. I just want to make sure that the listeners were clear. No, no, you're a cool nerd. No, no, we're bringing you to prom with us. Oh, that's Jay right. I got a seat in the house nerd. for the postseason, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> have I moved <laughs> up? I had to have moved up because people have cleared out, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. All right. What what place would the Angels be in if they were in the Central? Like, would we still have hope? Uh, you'd be right. You'd be right there in hope with the Guardians, I think, buddy. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Guardians are on fire. Like, they, they uh, that knockout, like, that can – oh, I want to say this. The Angels, they're like the – they're like a volcano that's like about to blow. Like, I don't know what's going to, like, not on the field offensively or defensively. Like, they're about to get into a scrap or something. So, like, something's about to happen. This game's, like, right at the brink of, like, overflow. Like, something's about to happen. Maybe it's, like, the next week or something. So, if you see, like, a benches clearing thing or something, it'll have the angels in there. Because they're just human. There's a lot of high tensions there in the angels. Probably area. a little late in the season, but... <laughs> You know, might be like Randall Gritch hit uh, some blows or something. Yeah. Um, I'll be waiting for it. I'll be waiting for it, Max. Um, It'll be a talking point. It definitely. sure will. It sure will. Uh, I hope you feel better. Um, Thank you. I hope your heart feels better because of the Angels. And, uh, you know, of course, football it, season, bro. It, it's football season. If any other uh, Angel stuff happens, you know, you know, we'll be uh, we'll be calling you. Hell yeah. All right, we'll talk right. to you. Love you guys. Go off. Love you too. Bye, Max. Yeah. What a guy. Poor Max. Poor Max. Sounds like he could use a blue moon. Or many. Because playoffs, not that he's going to be watching the Angels, but any baseball fan likes to watch playoff baseball. And they're, they're just around the corner. So it's time to help your team out by sticking to your lucky rituals. Like the ritual of enjoying an ice cold blue moon while the game is on. Blue Moon was born in a ballpark, first brewed at Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. Make it your one of a kind baseball tradition, whether you're at the park or watching from home. Joe, how many blue moons did you have last night when you were watching the Braves do what they did to Luis Severino? Three. Three blue moons. <laughs> Three. That's a, that is a responsible <laughs> amount. Did you drink them through your moons. sippy cup? <laughs> oh. Three. <laughs> with its refreshing flavor with Valencia orange peel for a subtle sweetness and hints of coriander. Blue Moon Belgian style wheat ale is a one of a kind beer that's made brighter. It's carefully crafted and full flavored with refreshing notes and a smooth, creamy finish. Blue Moon was brewed by baseball to give you a dose of nostalgia and get you excited for the new season. Why strike out with the same old beer when you can get something that's one of a kind? It's bold flavor, bright explosion of color and iconic orange sliced ritual guarantees a one of a kind beer experience. Perfect for spring weather. Best served with its signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful, bright color. A beer this good only comes around once in a blue moon, but you can enjoy it all season season long brighten up your baseball traditions with blue moon belgian style wheat ale it's a one of a kind every time check out shop 
get.bluemoonbrewingcompany.com for baseball merch and visit get.bluemoonbeer.com slash rocket to find Blue Moon delivery options. That is get.bluemoonbeer.com slash rocket. Blue Moon made brighter. Celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado Ale. <sighs> um, okay. Uh, what else do we have? What else was... Uh, oh. There was a deal. I threw out a tweet last night about Bobby Miller. You see that? Doyer's rookie, Bobby Miller. Uh, he retired 18 straight at one point during this game. Dude throws 99. Uh, I think I, they threw up some statistic. It was like a perfect Jared statistic. I wish I screenshot it. It was like. Well, from if from this span since July thirty six uh, at four oh seven it was worse. p.m. It was worse. It was worse. It was it was something that I wouldn't do, what? but I appreciated the <laughs> effort. Like I would do, like since April first to May fifteenth, and then from May fifteenth to July third, but then from July third to September fifth, I would do that. What they did <laughs> were like this. He had like a stretch of like four bad starts or whatever. So they were like, this is what his numbers are here. But outside of that, he's got this. So like they took like a date range from the beginning and a date range from the end and then threw out the cream filling. And then the 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 Oreo cookie part was like a two six five. But then the cream filling was like an 11.38 or whatever it was. <laughs> so that's something that I personally wouldn't do. Like if you take out the bad starts, he's actually really good. But I he is really good. Like that's the thing. Like he he uh I love what he had to say to Dave Roberts. He's like I he's like I just want to be available. Like I just want to be a guy that you can go to. Like I want to be one of your go-to guys um you know as a rookie not having an ego, which I don't know want to say that like there's a ton of rookies that do have egos i'm sure like a lot of them are feeling themselves because at that point you've you, the league hasn't broken you yet like you haven't been humbled yet so uh but this is a this is an individual that goes out there and competes doesn't have an ego about him and he he looked pretty nasty last night against uh, my milwaukee brewers nine straight wins for the dodgers who are just running away with this thing making everyone who picked the padres look like an asshole well, it's what the Dodgers were expected to do, even with the bumps in the road that they have faced. Because as we mentioned, you lose some guys, you deal with some of the injury setbacks that they've dealt with, but you seemingly just are able to plug and play young studs who come up and have 99 in the tank and want to be the apple of the manager's eye. What a fucking tough mm -hmm. spot to be in as a Dodgers fan. They've got the second largest lead of any division in baseball. Obviously, it's the Braves have a 12 and a half game lead over the Phils. Um, but now the Dodgers have opened up their the Dodgers uh, have Don't lead. the Dodgers have better odds to like win the World Series than a lot of... Uh, well, no, I wouldn't say that. Because the Braves have the best odds to win the World Series at 25%, the, right? Is that still the true? second best odds, Dodgers? The Dodgers second do. best odds. But what, what I was going to say, like, don't they... They've got the best... They've got better odds to win the World Series than how many teams... To fucking Dude, win the division. The Braves have a fucking 25% chance to win the World Series, not to go to, to the postseason, the World not to series. win the division, to win fucking everything. The World Series. That's absurd. I can't Low. recall a team that had odds that high to win a World Series. I think, I thought we looked at this. I thought it was the 2018 Astros. <clears throat> yeah, how'd that go? Well, I'm just telling you. <sighs> what were their odds? At it. They're his Braves. Yeah. Don't tell me shit about my Braves. Right, don't tell him shit. <laughs> you ain't telling me shit. You guys don't know anything about the Braves. Wow. <laughs> you were talking Braves, ask me. Tell me, what, tell me, about, tell the me about the Braves. Joe. Tell Just, me about the Braves. The, the Braves, <laughs> right now the Rays are at a 33.7% chance to win the division. The Atlanta Braves are less than 10% chance to win the World Series. Just 10% less than that. To win the World Series. The Rays 33.7 to take the division. The division. The Braves at 25% to win the whole fucking thing. So I, I misspoke. At this mm -hmm. point, August 16th, 2019, the Astros 
had 30% odds to win the World Series. Jesus. Wow. They were seven. They didn't even have the best record in baseball either. Both the Dodgers and the Yankees had better winning percentages at that time. Uh, but the Astros were 30% to make the playoffs, and the Dodgers and Yankees at that point were 30.6% combined to win the World Series. Mm. So there's, mm. there's the answer. There you go. Crazy. At this point last year, the team with the highest odds on August 16th only had 17.5% odds. So they are in substantially better position than any team was last year at this point or any team in 21. Mm -hmm. That's kind of scored 50 runs in the last five games, though, so they need to kind of get the bats going. Yeah, I saw your tweet. Sorry, I tweet about that, Joe. All right, like fifty runs. Uh, this is th- okay. This is an actual serious question. When your team is favored that heavily to win a World Series, does that almost make you nervous? Yeah, because like there's it's still better easy. odds. They there's still better odds that they don't win the World Series. According, to, there's a seventy five percent chance the Braves don't win the World Series. Mm-hmm. You just like a twenty five, and you're like, that's a lot. So they're a lock. Actually, there's a fairly good chance they don't win the World Series, according to the stats. Like yeah. I said earlier, On the flip I think side, that number's that, low. That, like, that is uh, <clears throat> an interesting way to look at it, where it's like, man, like the Braves are so fucking good, but I, if I tell you, I'll give you 75% chance they don't win the World Series. You're basically saying they suck. <laughs> I mean, I've watched a lot of Braves teams and like going into 2021, what was the Braves odds to win the World Series? That's the only time they've done it since I was alive. I'm sure it was a low as crap. Hmm. They weren't very good 2021 until they won the World Series. Pretty much, yeah. Last year, they were good and they lost. Yeah. You said 2021 preseason? Is that what we're talking about? No, I mean like going into the playoffs. Oh, cool. or if you looked at them during during the all uh, All Star break after they lost Acuna, I'm sure them making the playoffs was like you know ten percent. They have probably had a one percent chance, probably less than that, to win the World Series. The Braves' odds to year. win the World Series on July 31st, 2021, arbitrary date, but that's about what you're talking about here, right? Um, were one percent. Yeah. 1.0%. So that's the secret. That's the secret. Now let's look at some teams right now with a 1% chance to win the World Series, and that's where we might come up with something smart. The Angels. <laughs> a little low. A little low. A little but maybe low. they can get to 1% by the time, you know, getting a hot streak, they could get to 1%, and then we're feeling much better going into October for the Angels. The Seattle Mariners are actually my dark horse pick. I don't know what their odds are right now. But seeing who they're playing over the next few weeks, I'd be very shocked if they don't make the playoffs. 1.4% to win the World Series. Looking pretty good. Yes. Yeah, to me, I'd rather have a 1% chance in a lot of ways, but <laughs> there's less pressure. At the same time, the Atlanta Braves are on another level. Mm-hmm. I mean, over the past week, you know how fan graphs, they show you like the power rankings past seven days. They have like five of the top 12 players in their lineup over the past week. And one of them is Nicky Lopez, who's the 12th best hitter in the league. Nick drops dude in the past week. Yeah, what is he since becoming a Brave, he's hitting like 687 or something like that. You got to say that again, you lagged. Uh, what is he hitting since becoming a Brave? Nicky Lopez? Something insane. Yeah. Nicky Nukes. It's like north of 600. Nikki Lopez as an Atlanta Brave says, is hitting uh, down to 500. 500. Wow, he sucks. It's down to 500. <laughs> so it's like only a 1286 OPS. Yeah, it's 1286 yeah. OPS. Yeah, it's kind of bullshit. One whatever. decimal point two eight six OPS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For that ass. Uh, Joe. Um, That's good. MLB Pipeline put out their uh, new list of uh, MLB farm systems. And you're never going to believe who the number one farm system is in baseball. It's got to be the A's, right? <laughs> Where are the A's on this list? We don't we have, have to have, have that Don't click that button. Don't click that button. Yeah. 
that's got to be scrolling, scrolling. Don't see them yet. Uh, doesn't look like they're in the top 10. Uh, doesn't look like they're at least a mid farm system. Uh, how, how are they not in the top fucking 20? Didn't they? Didn't they trade Matt Olson and <laughs> Matt Chapman? They're 26th. They must have they must have gone out and traded for a big time cornerstone bat of the <laughs> trade deadline to fall that far or something. Twenty sixth, that's pretty bad, Dallas. How, in your estimation, having traded Matt Olson, who leads the big leagues in home runs, and Matt Chapman, who is an all star, uh, and you didn't make any moves as far as I am aware of at the trade deadline. How are the Oakland A's 26th uh, in the middle of a rebuild? How are they 26th? Look, they're not 28th. <laughs> that's that's true. They're not 30th. No. Nope. So I think that's probably a conversation we should have. Like the job that yeah, they've think, done uh, to stay away from that tier of, of resource. Like that that's the conversation we should be having here. The fact that the A's yeah. are not 30th. Look, it, sometimes it just takes a little while for those prospects to blossom, Jared. I agree. Uh, but it is kind of insane when you look at some of these bottom teams. And like Jay Hay made this point a few weeks ago. The Kansas City Royals are ranked 29th. Like they've been rebuilding for like eight years. And they still have the 29th ranked farm system. Uh, the Los Angeles Angels. They just traded some of their top prospects for rentals just to bump up to a 0.4% chance to make the playoffs in the second week of August. Uh, the Atlanta Braves, we get it. Like they don't <clears throat> they don't have any top prospects because they're all all stars now at the big league level. Um, but then the Oakland A's, how does that team have the 26th ranked farm system? when you've traded absolute stars and sucked for a few years now, like uh, Jacob Wilson, very nice pick. That's a good pick by the Oakland A's. But like, n- it's not like any of your players graduated. Like, like the, like the Braves and Astros are down the bottom. I think the Astros are dead last. It's like, yeah, you've had players graduate to the big league level. So your farm system is not going to look as pretty as it used to. What's the A's excuse? Told you it's just a lack of uh or it's just a lack of those prospects having blossomed quite yet. Some injury setbacks, mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. like that. And then all of a sudden, where you're supposed to be finding progress and you're supposed to be making headway, you're just not. And that's mm-hmm. all it takes is for one of these guys that is supposed to be a pivotal part of the return to just, I don't know, have baseball and life happen where that stuff doesn't work out. And now the hall just looks like hell, if that's the case. Yeah. I mean, that's and that's not just that's not, I'm not saying that about the A's. I'm saying that about any organization who moves big pieces and has some of those pieces come back and whether it's injury or lack of production. I mean, that's why it's such a slippery slope when you talk about prospects and what the potentiality for the return could be, because it's all based on projection. Like you're you're projecting. 20 year olds, 21 year olds, right? And I know it's a little different, but it's almost the same kind of conversation when we're like, it feels like, oh, has your 8U child been evaluated for travel ball this year? Well, come out to the tryouts and we'll give you some stat cast readings. We'll give you some track man readings on your eight year old and we'll see where they fit in. It's like, look, we're, we're not projecting eight year olds, but at the same time, you're trying to project what these young guys could do for a big league team based on what the numbers look like at low level minor leagues. And sometimes that just doesn't work out. I, I just, Jared's comment about the Royals is just utterly depressing because like you have, and it brings me back to a conversation that we sort of like tickled with a couple of weeks ago, which is like, how quickly are you advancing into the area where trading Bobby Witt Jr. is actually the most viable path forward for this roster, right? Because like 
that seems crazy, especially with how well Witt himself has been playing over the last couple of weeks and months. We're up to 23 homers and 34 stolen bases, and by fan graphs, basically a five-win season as a 23-year-old. But you look at the rest of the roster, while keeping in mind what Jared said about who isn't coming to supplement this team and the payroll that they don't flexibility that they really don't have as an organization or choose not to have. And you see who's been the most productive players around Bobby Witt this season. And you're talking about like a, the first thing that jumps out is that there has been very few productive players around Bobby Witt. Secondarily, we're talking about like the Freddie Fermin guy who's been kind of like a, a little bit of a mini sensation has been their third best position player this season. He has 179 plate appearances and he's 28 years old. And every th- there are no other building blocks that are developing offensively. There's they're presumably trading Salvador Perez at something near the bottom of his value next uh, com- this coming off season. All of the people who have graduated to the major leagues have played below the level that you expected from them as prospects with the exception of wit. And you look and at the past watch. Yeah. He's a, what's well, that? I mean, past watch well, past, and past Katina. Yeah. Yes. And no, I mean, he was not exactly lighting the world on fire before he went down this season, but yeah, it was, that's mostly an injury situation, but you look at the pitching side and it's, it's arguably even more depressing because there is no Bobby Witt jr. Equivalent. Like your best pitcher has been Brady Singer and Brady Singer's value has been completely tied up in the fact that he just takes the ball. He has a 4.91 ERA and is 26 years old. Their next best pitcher has been Chapman or Aldis, who's thrown fewer than 30 innings. Well, let me ask you this too. uh, Yeah, sorry. Go go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, uh, the, the Salvador Perez situation, you're talking about getting ready to trade him. Think about how that has played out, right? They, they rode him. They rode him. They rode him when it came time to compensate him. They, I don't want to say they did him a favor, but I like to see the fact that they broke Salvador off. But yep. he's now the one piece left over from years gone by and past Royals success. And what's to say that the Royals don't look at Bobby Witt Jr. as the same type of piece, inevitably putting themselves in their own way again trying to get better for the long haul because Bobby Wood Jr. is one of the most exciting young players in baseball, hands down. And that is a guy who, if you move off of him, especially at this point in his career right now, you'd like to think that you are going to set yourself up just to, to wherever you're at right now to raise your level, several standards to a, a different operating baseline just by what you could get back. But um, do they fancy Bobby yeah. Wood Jr. as somebody just like Salvador Perez that they got to keep in house? And as I said, eventually just he turns into a hurdle that they put in front of themselves instead of being that that piece that they that they wanted. So I think in a vacuum, yes, he would be that piece for the Royals. Why I don't think it's actually going to play out that way is for a couple of reasons. Firstly, um, I think Bobby Wood Jr. is ultimately. A, a substantially better player than Salvador Perez is or had the potential to be at the time that he kind of ascended to the major leagues. I think the price tag on locking up Bobby Witt Jr. is going to be prohibitive when compared to the price tag that even the second contract that Salvador Perez got, which I think was four and 82. Mm-hmm. Um, the first deal was preposterously Tim friendly for the Royals, right? I don't think Bobby Witt Jr., is going to be in a position to sign a contract like that. I don't know what his personal family situation is as far as, but we do know he has family who played in the major leagues. What I do know is that his signing bonus was almost $8 million. And so I think he's coming from a financially, a financial perspective that Salvador Perez probably wasn't at the time he signed his first long-term team friendly deal. I think the Royals are going to have to, I mean, the template is out there for the Royals to sign Bobby Witt Jr. Is it not? Corbin Carroll signed his extension, right? I don't want to bring up Wander Franco for unnecessarily, but Wander Franco signed his extension with the Rays, right? Same position. The template is out there for Bobby Witt Jr.'s extension. And we're talking now with time, the time passing, we're talking north of $200 million, I think. And the Royals have no question. 
And the Royals have no history of spending anywhere near that level. So I think we're back to the what? But if they're willing to tell you that they're going to be going for it slash rebuilding for a decade at a time, then Bobby Wood Jr. fits into that equation because they'll sign Bobby Wood Jr. and tell you that they're going to try to compete but continue to just sprinkle talent around to see if that holds or if something takes because that, again, I mean, or the Kansas, Kansas City Royals could very well be a team, Jay Hay, that is looking at the, the wild card picture and thinking, we just got to get in. We don't have to build a team that has to take the division. We just have to build a team that can be competitive and gain one of those three spots. I, I, I will believe that the Royals are willing to issue a $200 million contract when I see it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I think we both agree that Bobby Wood Jr. would be that dude if you're going to do it for them. For sure. And I'd prefer There's- that he stayed like I'd prefer that they build around a guy that they developed and who has the potential to be a a, a caliber of player who can be a lifelong royal or whatever, mm-hmm. or for the vast majority of his career, you can build around him, et cetera, et cetera. I, I don't I'm not ex, I'm not encouraging the departure of a of a young player on it on a team. I just think when you look at the financial realities, how good he already is, how bad their team is, how bad their farm system is, and how little they spend. I see I see one very likely path forward, and everything else is a little bit of a pipe dream. I think. I hope I'm wrong about that. That'd be cool if he signed a two hundred million dollar contract. To stay That'd be Kansas. fabulous. Mm-hmm. I just I don't know. The whole royal situation is incredibly depressing. The one good thing about it is that it sets him up to a great opportunity when Zach Greinke gets back to just let him hit every game he pitches. Like, in my opinion, they'd be dumb not to do that. I don't love the Red Sox being ranked 16th right now. Don't love that. That doesn't make any sense to me. They were 11th after the trade deadline in 2022. Those prospects that they got at the trade deadline only have gotten better. Uh, and then they drafted fucking Kyle Teal, who fell to them. Like he was supposed to, like people had him in the top five and he fell to them like halfway. I forget where the Red Sox picked, 16, something like that. Um, yeah, this is wrong. The Red Sox are a top 10 farm system, unfortunately, for this list. <laughs> they just are. You don't go from 11th to 16th when you get better. That does. That's not. That's not how math works. Uh, unless there was uh, five, four, or five other teams who actually got even better than you did. No, 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 no. Everybody got better. Happen. Didn't happen. A lot of guys. A lot of teams got better. That's why they should have traded James Paxton. Like I know that it's. I'm not going to do another one of those fucking rants, but <laughs> I can't. I don't have the energy for it. But you know, it's almost like like there's just the younger Red Sox fans. They think that this team, like, did, could they still make the playoffs this year? Yeah, they could. But what's the point? <laughs> like, they're not going to win the World Series. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's frustrating. It's fr- then the Dodgers are obviously always a top 10 farm system. They're at number six. Their preseason rank coming into this year, they were the second best farm system. But now they're at number six. Cincinnati Reds, no surprise. At number five, the Cubbies, number four. My Milwaukee Brewers at number three. That's a big jump for them. They went from uh, 15 before the season to number three. And then you have Dallas's Pittsburgh Pirates. That's because right. uh, there is something, Dallas. There's something that happened yesterday, isn't there? You're damn right, Carabas. You're damn right. They rose the flag of the draft, and they watched that flag whip to and fro in the mighty winds of Bradenton. On the horizon, it was the most anticipated debut of the highly touted marauder, Paul Steens. And what did he do? Well, he dialed up two punch out 16 pitches in his debut. Uh, you like to see that. Though it wasn't 105 miles an hour, Paul Skeens showing the world, showing the Buckos brass just why he goes oon oon. Absolute Ched Biscuits wipeout slide pieces. 
congratulations to Paul Skeens on his professional debut. Just how you draw it up. Didn't punch out three, but he wiped out two and left just salivating for more. Is there anything else that you wanted to do or? Well, I just, I'm excited about the future. And I think what this does when you get a guy like Paul Skeens, you want to one, you get him dialed in early. I think for the fan base as a, I got a little, oh, sorry. <clears throat> this is <clears throat> the humidity. I think as a fan base, what it helps does is. <clears throat> The expectations and the excitement of the future, Jay. Hey, shut your mouth. Best reason for that bit in months. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, it's been a down second half, okay? It's fine. A little storm blew into port. We've had a hard time getting the ship out beyond the break. It's it's it is what it is. I think it's I'm not gonna cast any shade on Paul Skeen's debut. That's a reason to get excited. Wow. You know, yeah, let me should done, we be doing the whole raise it thing over like an inning? I I, I don't know. But that's we're, not for me to decide. We're, we're talking about expectations, Jay. Talking about I, the future. The future. The future. I know. Mapping. The future, it's it's the future. always the future because it's never the present in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Paul Skeen's is a present yeah. that just got oh. unwrapped. Wow. Jake, we've had some people reaching out being like, we want to help out, we want to like intern or whatever. I, I would say the we we award an internship to whoever makes the best season recap of this podcast. So assuming that you want to intern, you have to have listened all year. So I want someone that make whoever makes the best s- baseball is dead season in review compilation. Uh, that's that's who wins the internship for for whenever that may be. Because if you go back and watch a compilation of this podcast from the 2023 Major League Baseball season, the whole first half is going to be Pirates coverage. (laughs) This podcast was a Pirates podcast from April, probably until about mid-June. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Things were looking good. We were a proper society at one point in time. Yeah. Yeah. That was big for you. That was big for the brand, Dallas. It was good. It was nice. You know, I mean, I, life was good for you. Need a little diversion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You needed a distraction from your life as an Oakland A's fan uh, slash broadcaster. But the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's not it's not as bad. It's not as bad as you would think. Like, did they keep up the winning record? No. <laughs> But I mean, at fifty four and sixty six, things could be worse. They have the same. And what if I told you, at the beginning of the year, what if I told you that on August sixteenth, that the Pittsburgh Pirates would be going into the uh, today's play with the same record as the St. Louis Cardinals? You'd be like, no fucking way. I'd be pretty excited about where things were. You know, feel like the Cardinals yeah. should probably be somewhere near the top of their division. That is not the case. Mm-hmm. No. Yep. No, it's not. No. Um, Just saw the card. But there's still plenty of tickets available if you want to go see the Pittsburgh Pirates. One of the most exciting teams. Uh, the future is bright. And that's that's no joke. That's a lie. Uh, if you've heard that the Pittsburgh Pirates are not worth investing in because that farm system is good. And you all got a little glimpse of it earlier in the season that the Pittsburgh Pirates are going to be the real deal soon. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets with their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for all the fun that you'll have. Uh, Joe, when's the next time you're going to a baseball game? Uh, no idea. All right. and But it, I bet you'll probably use the game time app when you do go to that game, and, and we got a promo code for you to use. Forget planning. <laughs> Months in advance, Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section in a row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. 
Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your email. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code Jared, J A R E D, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, use the promo code Jared for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Um, Jake, what are you looking for in an intern if we had a baseball is dead intern? I mean, I'd probably be looking for a Sox fan. That would, in my book, that would uh, mm -hmm. bump you up a couple points. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, if you're just a fan of the show and like you get the vibe of the show, that goes a long way mm -hmm. in terms of like being on social and cutting clips and stuff like that. The secret is to do the most work possible, like 80 hours, and then expect zero money. Like <laughs> you need someone who's willing to work their ass off and get no money and never bring up money and just <laughs> do it for free. That's the trick never, to getting a job like this. And never up bring up money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, ain't it the truth? Is that the uh, is that how the baseball doesn't exist internship department runs? Yeah. So uh, yeah, that applies. You want to work for me, and you want zero money, and we'll work nonstop. That's perfect. Joe, is it true that you <laughs> is it true that you've already fired the intern that you had help on the video you did in Oakland? That's not an intern. That's a full time employee. Oh wow! And no, he's not getting a raise. Oh. <laughs> he's not getting a raise. He's he's not getting a raise. Why not? Like I said, good employees don't want raises. They <laughs> want to make less money so that the person in charge can make more money. Right. Yes. Yes. Your employees ask for less money uh, at the end of the year so that you can make more money. Yeah, and then we can talk about raises in the future. You know what I'm saying? To, in order to get a raise, you got to work. You got to do good work. Right. Good work is asking for less money and not getting paid a lot. Right. Uh, have you selected a subject for the next video? Yeah. Of course. Almost done. Do you want to give me a hint? Oh, it's almost uh, done. Little, 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 little. Almost done? It's like more what of a you know video that... It's just basically a see, kind of a season recap. So I can just tell you what, uh, it, you know, you know what's happened in the past few months. Get you ready for it. the playoffs, the big storylines. Mm. What in your mind is the biggest storyline going into the playoffs this year? Uh, in terms of uh, going into the playoffs, going biggest the playoffs. story line most i think the most fascinating as like a baseball on the field thing is probably the rangers and the astros you got a couple storylines you got the rivalry between the two teams who did have an on the field altercation plus a rivalry between scherzer and verlander these guys hate each other we mm -hmm. just write it in the new york post they're sworn enemies all <laughs> yeah. right so that that combination of headbutting could be for some crazy fireworks yeah you're not wrong. But I would say the biggest storyline in baseball recently, the past like month or two, has just been like the biggest, like just teams being like um, shit shows. I feel like that's been like the kind of thing. You got the Mets, then you got the White Sox and the Yankees, Padres, like, and then all these teams have like uh, off the field stories coming out. I feel like that's been like the, a big uh, theme of the season. Speaking of off season stories coming out. Uh, that New York Post story that Joseph just referenced. We talked about it on the very last episode. If you haven't listened, go back and listen. Uh, but it was that an unnamed Mets employee or teammate called Justin Verlander a diva for coming over to the Mets and saying, hey, this isn't how we do it over in Houston. We have better technology over there. No pun intended. That's no, not really a pun, but uh, it's not a wink, wink, nudge, nudge comment. Um, and I think everyone here took his side saying, yeah, I think that it comes up from a place of jealousy. Uh, if you're with the Mets and you say, yeah, dude, shut the fuck up, Mr. Cy Young, Mr. MVP, Mr. World Series champion, Mr. Supermodel wife. Fuck you. We know what we're doing here at the Mets. You're like, yeah, we haven't won a championship in 35 years, but like, listen to us. We know better than you. Who's literally coming off a of Cy Young in a World Series title. Go fuck yourself. So. Uh, Justin Verlander put out a tweet, which I don't think he had to do. I think most people were on his side anyway, but it was interesting that he kind of put out like a, not a statement, but it was one of those oh. like uh, notes app fucking uh, statements. 
He said, and I quote, I want to say that I have nothing but respect for the Mets organization and I enjoyed connecting with all of my teammates this season, new and old. So that's to say, I don't have a fucking problem with you, Max Scherzer. So stop talking shit, dude. I don't have a problem with you. If there's a problem here, it's a one way street. I want to say that I have nothing but respect for the Mets organization and I enjoyed connecting with all of my teammates this season, new and old. It truly was a wonderful group of people. That being said, we all know the success of a team is made up of more than just the players on the field. Everyone's input is valuable. I'm sorry to hear that a staff member took offense to the constructive criticism on how we could improve. Wishing nothing but the best to the Mets moving forward. Well, that's perfect response. <clears throat> that's everything I said. It is everything I said to a T. It's almost like I knew exactly what the fuck I was talking about. Sorry about that. But I told you, culture. It's about culture. And when other teams do things a certain way and have results to bear, you cannot dismiss the culture. And that is a prime example. Prime example. You've got teams who from top to bottom are invested in doing things a certain way. There is no dissension among the ranks. There is clear and concise and efficient communication, and it's because everybody understands the task at hand. Everybody is on board with winning. They all value the tools and the resources that they have. They know how to utilize them. They know what they're looking for. They know how to fix the things that they know how to identify. That is all a culture. If you don't have everybody pulling in the same direction, you inevitably have people fighting against each other and jockeying for position. And it's tough when you have a large group like that, where you think that there might be some cannibalism going on, where people want to put their fingerprints and leave their mark on this player, this pitcher, whatever. And they'll, they'll tell a guy, you know, whatever you're hearing over here, like, look, I get it. That's valuable, but I think you should focus on this. And that could be happening in the same room, pitching coach, data analyzer, blah, blah, blah. So to have everybody on the same page is invaluable. And that's exactly what that message from Justin Verlander was all about. You think it's about talent? You think it's about productivity? It is to an extent, but winning and winning at a sustainable level has so much more to do with the culture and everybody else around that clubhouse as opposed to just the players in it. I thought it was a perfect response from, from Verlander. I mean, it's just, he addresses the Scherzer drama, being like, hey, pal, if there's a beef here. I, I got no problem with you. And I need people to know that I have no problem with you. Uh, and then it, it's just, you know, using the term constructive criticism. I didn't talk shit about nobody. I didn't say like, go fuck yourself if you want to do it this way. I just said, hey, this is how we were doing it over there. And that's the I don't want to say there's no right way or wrong way. Like that's the beauty of baseball is that everyone has their own way and multiple ways can be correct. Like several, several ways can be correct. Look at how many different batting stances, for example, there are in Major League Baseball. Well, they're all different. They're like a fingerprint. So like, it's not like, you know, you have plenty of successful hitters. They all have different batting stances. They all have different hitting philosophies. Well, there's different ways to succeed in Major League Baseball. But when you come from the Houston Astros organization and you're Justin Vorlander, who not just had recent success from a team perspective and personal success from from, you know, the, the most recent season that you played, but also your entire career. That's a guy that I'm not telling to shut the fuck up when he wants to offer advice. So it comes across. So and this is what I said in the podcast last time I said this and I'll repeat it. It's a fucked spot to be in, because if you are somebody who won a world series or so seven years ago and you come in referencing what you did seven years ago what are people going to tell you bro that was seven years ago like that was a while ago all right things have changed like i i get that that's what you did then but we're doing things differently now so that position is almost rendered ineffective and then you get somebody like verlander coming off of everything you just outlined jared and he's met with Oh, really? Let me guess. Because you just won. Like, this is how to do it. Like, oh, because you know everything. Like now, now 
him that trying comes to from help a place of insecurity too. Yeah, it's like, and him trying. Oh, you think you know everything? And Verlander's too. I, I don't. I'm not gonna say I sit here and blow Verlander like Dallas will with Ben, but like with Justin, <laughs> it's like I, I think I think it's more like he, I'm not gonna call him humble. But he's not going to go there. He's not going to say, well, yeah, you should fucking listen to me. Look at my trophy case. Well, like, I, he's not going to he, say he, that, but he, he has every right to. And there, there is. And I, I look, having having listened to listen to him talk. I mean, I've spoken to the guy a few times. Um, I, I've got a vibe for him. That right there, that statement is a I'll say this because what you don't want me to do is you don't want me to get specific. You don't want me to start creating lists for you as far as reasons why you should be listening to me do you do i need to do that because if i need to do that i'd rather just leave the room because i don't have the energy to do that right like you're talking about people having to remove ribs and shit for blowing themselves verlander's like i I just i'm not going to do that dude like the, the numbers are what they are the career is what it is the accolades are what they are like if you don't want to listen to me know that walking away from this people will look at you like you have four heads for not listening to me more than they will look at me like I'm a diva for wanting my team to be better than they are right now. Um, anything else on that? I feel like that wasn't like a, like a huge deal. It just was interesting to see that he had uh, commented on it. No. Okay. Good to know. Good to no um anything going on for the slate i feel like we've we've done we've done a tremendous job of making a hour and a half podcast out of quite literally no real interesting topics good job i need to go eat breakfast we're just compelling personalities we really are um dallas if you're going to be going outside for breakfast though grab a pair of knockground sunglasses for i fucking need them yeah, we're in the heat. I don't think they make A's ones, though, unfortunately. But if you want to wear a pair of uh, Red Sox sunglasses, I got you. We're in the heat of summer. You need a pair of great shades that you don't have to baby. Knock around sunglasses is the go-to for the quality polarized shades that won't break the bank. Plus, they just released a new set of teams for their official MLB collection, including Red Sox and Yankees, as well as U.S. official women's soccer team sunglasses. So you can add a little something extra to your game day outfit with this summer's big games. Don't be the person that's squinting into the sun or worried about getting sand on their overpriced sunglasses. Check out knockaround.com for great looking polarized shades. Starting at just 28 bucks, use the promo code rocket and you'll get free shipping on your order. It's a nice little deal. Very uh, inexpensive sunglasses and free shipping. Pretty solid. What are you doing, Dallas? You need the shades? I, I do. I. You can barely see. It's tough. Interesting. It's uh, tough. I'm all. The I. What? Oh no! Now that I had the, <laughs> I had the, A's uh, future roster pulled up. It's looking bright too. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh. Oh yeah. What is it? The 2032 roster they buddy, got already. Buddy, hey. New Oakland. Will they even be? It won't be Oakland. Uh, do you? Will they still even be called the A's by then? I mean, are, are we going to go down this path right now? You already have physical yeah, assault curious. coming your way. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious. It's more of a, just, you know, since you want to talk about the future, let's talk about the future. I want to talk about knock around sunglasses. Yeah, you can do that. Um, I'll be wearing some knock around sunglasses later when I go to the Savannah Bananas game. I'm excited. I mean, I, I do know what to expect, but I don't know what to expect at the same time. Like, I'm, it's almost like, yes, I am familiar with your game, but I'm not entirely familiar with what could happen today i do know i'm going to be talking to bill lee which will be fun um, that's gonna be awesome yeah he's uh i interviewed him in 2011 or 12 and i remember one of the only things i remember about that interview is that i asked him like why do you think carl crawford is struggling in boston and he said because uh there are too many one-way streets in boston and it gets people really confused and it takes them off their game. So that's why he's playing poorly. There's too many one way streets in Boston. It's the uh, uh, the it's a metaphor for just needing to get it going in the right direction, Jared. Yeah, that's what it was. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. He ended up getting traded to the Dodgers. Uh, Jesse Cole, the owner 
of the Savannah Bananas. Going to get to talk to him as well. There, Once upon a time, me and Dallas were supposed to do something with the Savannah Bananas, and it never happened. There's always like we've always gotten like so close to doing something with the bananas, and it fell through because uh, funding, whatever other reasons, travel, uh, maybe maybe people that were in charge of connecting the 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 two sides and making the trip happen. Maybe they weren't as as dedicated to making it happen as Dallas and I were. But, you know, one of the things that I, I've been told might happen is I might be able to swing the uh, flaming bat. You, you better hit it. Mm. <laughs> oh, don't swing and miss. That would be tough. That would be a tough look. But swing I mean, and miss. So, like, I'm not even going to listen to you right now because this is like when... uh What? When I was throwing out the first pitch at Fenway and everyone was like, don't bounce it. Don't bounce it. Fucking seed right down the middle. Look, if I was gonna, if it was not going to be a strike, it was because I was going to yank it. It was never going to be that I didn't fucking reach the plate. Yeah, no one's and saying that. This this could be a matter of you miss. just missing. I lit- Dallas, I literally was just at the MLB Combine in front of the best amateur talent in the fucking world. Yeah. Just cranking ropes back up the middle. I didn't <laughs> swing and miss one time. <laughs> Number of swings and misses with all that pressure, zero. Zero swings and all misses. That, there's no pressure. It's a it's there's no pressure. No. By the way, let me just say this. Baseball. I'm just gonna say this. I'm just gonna say this, Dallas. I'm a 34-year-old podcaster. Okay. I'm a 34-year-old man. I'm a 34-year-old <laughs> podcaster. Baseball has got to be the most difficult sport. To just roll out of bed and play, like you, you have to. Like, there is a such thing as tough. baseball shape. <laughs> Golf, like my my seventy eight year old grandfather golfs all the time. Uh, like you, if you were to, if you were to uh, roll out of bed and play baseball, you can see who is the guy that rolls out of bed and does it, and who's the guy that plays regularly. Like you need to play regularly to like look good doing it. Yet for whatever reason. You never see um, what's his fucking name? Who's the rap report? You never see rap report throwing on fucking shoulder pads and like going out there and playing football. Like you, you don't see Jeff Passan taking hacks at the MLB combine for whatever reason. I'm just the guy where like, oh, you cover that sport. Go out and play it at like a high level in front of fucking professionals all the time, all the time. I don't get it. Not a baseball player, podcaster, but I'll still do it. Perfect game. You had a no hitter. I did throw a no hitter. You talk shit about how good you are at baseball all the time. eh? No, I don't. What you talk? Yes, you do. Sixteen years ago. No, this is like two years ago. You guys were playing at Field of Dreams. Remember, you got the gun. Uh, I got hit. I got hit by a pitch. I couldn't even demonstrate how nasty I am, dude. You've said this ten times on the podcast. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You have a major league arm. No, I don't. Not anymore. Not anymore. I can still hit. I mean, I faced Dallas in a charity game in November of 21 and hit a fucking absolute seed out to the wall. Dude had to run it down, almost killed himself running into the wall to catch it. But yeah, I can still hit a little bit. But pitch? No, that's not something you can just roll out of bed and do. Can't do it. Can't do it. But anyways, back to back. Fuck! I'll be doing Savannah Banana stuff tonight, and then next week I'll be playing in the old time baseball game. <laughs> so, <sighs> just shit together. Dude, you know, I my body just can't handle that shit anymore. You, you know, Dallas, you can't even wipe your own ass. True. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts, Jay. Hey. Uh, so we were talking earlier about the Braves postseason odds being at 25.5%. Uh, Fangraph's odds go back to 2014. I went back and looked with the exception of 2020, because obviously looking in August wouldn't make any sense then. Um, I looked at all of the w- years on August 16th, the team with the highest postseason odds. The only team from 2014 to 2022 who had the highest odds on August 16th that went on to win the World Series was the 2016 Cubs. 14 Nationals, 15 Dodgers, 17 Dodgers, 18 Astros, 19 Astros, 21 Dodgers, 22 Mets all came up short. We'll see what the Braves can do. 
Go yeah. Bravos. Go Bravos. My <laughs> final thoughts. Uh, I want to shout out the law dog, Lawrence Butler. Yeah. Of course I do. Jay, hey, hey, you want to know what? You want to know what, uh, Jay? It's so funny. I love the nicknames. It's the I, nicknames. It's I not took, the shout out. I yeah. took an oath. I took an oath to myself many years ago when somebody had put a microphone in my hand and decided to put a camera on me at the same time. We were like, you know what? Say baseball shit. I said, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I am Get not going uncomfortable. I am not going to overlook <laughs> hashtag New Orleans. I am not going to overlook the little guy, the small fry, the folks that can easily be overlooked and go unmentioned because their teams just aren't moving the needle for you. Well, I happen to be very close to a team that might not be moving the needle for you. That doesn't mean mm-hmm. that fans of that team aren't having their needle moved for different reasons. And if you're an Oakland A's fan right now, the arrival of Lawrence Butler has got your needle cranking right now. Law Dog hit his first homer. Just uh, It's just fun to see the youngest position player group in baseball, the Oakland A's, average age of 26 years old. I mean, you look around the infield, you're starting fucking 25-year-olds and younger everywhere. But the arrival of Lawrence Butler has been very exciting. Just hit his first big league bomb. Um, it's been fun to watch, and I think it'll be. Uh, I, I think it's a part of that. Like I said, the new future for these. But congratulations, Lawrence Butler. I I say I why stop? Why stop at the law dog? Let's shout out. Let's shout out Langy. Let's shout out Tony Baseball. Oh, it's it's let's Bangalers. Shout, let's shout out it's Bangalers. Nick, it's Nicky Knox. It, let's shout Nikki out JP. Knox, of course, Nicky Day Day Day. Yeah, uh, let's shout out Day. <laughs> Razor Ramon. He's right. no longer. Rook. Hey, that's your guy. Yeah, that's right. your laser these yeah. days. Oh yeah, Jake. Ray, Razor's gone. Sorry, that's right. He's that's on. Right. He's yeah. on your team. Yeah. You guys got finally got some pop in the second. outfield. You're welcome. Yeah. JJ Bladay Day. <laughs> Zachy G. <laughs> Loffy. Yeah. Who's the other guy? Loffy. Uh, Nick Nicky Pickett. Man, See, there you go. Pickett. You got two of the three. Hey, after he after he hit the fucking two home runs, buddy. I told you we changed the name to Nikki Nukes. It's not Nikki Knox. Pauly, it's Nikki Nukes. Polly punch himself. Yeah. <laughs> Polly punch out. Uh, Searsy. You know. <laughs> it's it's JP Sizzle. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Mm-hmm. Can't forget about Team May. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys are. Uh... You guys are you guys are very uh, one of the most identifiable teams in baseball. Yeah, like there's 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 neutral fans out there. You know, that are you just know, like you know what? I kind of fuck with the A's. You say it's Nikki a, Pickett, and everybody knows. That's it. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows. There's T-shirts. <laughs> that's it. Uh, Joseph. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, after last night's big. Braves game and Ronald Acuna showing that he's got still got some pop in that back. I'm looking at the projections. He's on pace for 37 homers. So don't sleep on the 40-40 season. I think that's lost some steam. Yeah, it definitely but the man, has. But the man is pretty close. How many uh, stolen bases he on pace for? 75. Yeah, I wanted 40-80. So that's still on the table. I mean, it's not impossible. We'll see. We'll see if he gets there. I need Jake four, I'd be happy with 40, 70, 37, 70, though. Mm. Can yeah, that be yeah. disappointing and be fair? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be. Yeah, uh, not really aren't really disappointing, but yeah. to our expectations. Yeah, still going to get MVP. Jake's takes. I know we were shitting on the Yankees earlier, but just wanted to shout out DJ LeMayhew. Cool single up the middle last night. <laughs> Ended up being their only hit, but uh, that was a that was a sick moment. It was a good piece of heat hitting. Uh, man, people people get mad at talking baseball for being anti Red Sox, but I mean, goddamn, it's, we might we we might get some anti Yankee accusations on this pod. That's crazy. I I agree. I'm not one of those people that think that. I'm level headed about. We're just it. stating the facts. We're just stating the facts. Like we we didn't say anything bad about them. We just, I mean, Jake just pointed out what happened. That's just that's just something that happened. 
there are no bigger piss babies about the Yankees than Yankee fans themselves. Let's, let's that's true. That's true. I'm sure that there's a lot of Yankee fans that listen to the show and they, they do it because they know they're going to get honest commentary, something that they can't get from their own fan base. Some of those people are just not honest about what's going on right now. Some of them are, some of them are, they, they see the writing on the wall, but some of them delusional. They, they, they think that they're going to get Shohei Otani this winter and everything's going to be okay. <laughs> God bless those people. Please don't reproduce. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. We out.